Hello again, and welcome back to the Bible Backdrop Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on the second Christmas episode. In the first episode, I talked about Bethlehem and the Magi. In this episode, I'm going to focus on Herod and the flight to Egypt. Herod enters the story in Matthew 2 when the Magi come seeking the king of the Jews. Who was this man? To answer that, we have to look pretty far back in Jewish history. See, Herod was actually not Jewish, but he was Idumean, or an Edomite. The Edomites are the descendants of Esau. Back in Genesis, Abraham has the son of the promise named Isaac. Isaac has two children, Jacob and Esau. Jacob has 12 sons, who eventually become the 12 tribes of Israel. However, Esau also has his descendants, and they are called Edomites, and they live south of Israel. Technically, they were cousins of the Israelites, but were often at war with them throughout the Old Testament. To tell the complete story about Herod, we have to start with his father Antipater. He was a man of great wealth and married the daughter of a local noble, giving him both wealth and political power. The people he married into controlled some of the trade routes in the area for caravans from the east heading to the Mediterranean Sea. In 63 BC, Pompey, a Roman general, invades Palestine to help settle a Judean civil war, and Antipater supports the campaign. He then later turns around and supports Julius Caesar during his civil war with Pompey. Later, he becomes friends with Mark Antony, who is Julius Caesar's right-hand man. Caesar gives him and his family Roman citizenship and makes him an official Roman magistrate over Judea. At this point, Antipater makes Herod the governor of Galilee. Later, Mark Antony would make him tetrarch, or co-ruler of Galilee. Then, in 40 BC, a civil war breaks out in Palestine, and Herod has to flee to Rome. There, the Senate gives him the title King of the Jews and gave him troops to help retake his position. He returned to Judea after a three-year campaign to solidify Roman control of the area. He ruled from 37 BC to 4 BC. He divorced his first wife, Doris, and married Mariamne, a Hasmonean princess. This was to end the feud with the Hasmoneans, who were a priestly family of Jewish leaders that were descendant from the Maccabees. The Maccabees were considered Jewish royalty, and he probably used this marriage to help with his standing among his Jewish subjects. He supported Mark Antony during his war with Octavian. After Octavian won, he confessed to him which side he had taken. This was a dangerous gamble as the outcome could have been Herod's head on the chopping block. However, the gamble paid off as Octavian realized that Herod would rule Judea as the Romans wished it ruled. Herod then started large building projects including the temple that was described in the Gospels. He also built the forts at Masada and Herodium. He also built amphitheaters, racetracks, and temples to the emperor, which made him hated by the Jews. The saying was that he tried to be a Jew to the Jews and a Roman to the Romans. As described earlier, he was an Idumean, but he converted to Judaism, so many of his subjects considered him half-Jewish. He ruled with fear and was known as an absolutely brutal murderer. Early in his reign, he killed 45 Judean nobles to bring the rest in line, He falsely accused his wife, Mariamne, of adultery and had her executed. He killed three of his sons he thought were plotting against him. And then before his death, he ordered that Judean nobles be executed so that the country would be in mourning when he died. The order, thankfully, was not carried out. Many of these atrocities appear to be born out of a relentless paranoia, which helps us understand his frame of mind when the Magi show up. When the Magi come to seek Jesus, he sends them to Bethlehem and asks to report back so he can go worship. Knowing Herod's background, it's obvious he's looking to kill the child. The Magi leave Bethlehem and are warned by God not to report back to Herod. When he finds out, he is outraged and orders the death of all male babies to and under based on the time the Magi saw the star. Now, Many wonder if this actually happened since it is not mentioned anywhere else except the Bible, specifically only in Matthew. However, the thought is that since Bethlehem was so small, the numbers were probably pretty low, maybe around 30 children. Given Herod's history, people probably didn't talk about it much, and definitely didn't record it else they should share the same fate. This event then brings us to the flight to Egypt. And this story is told in Matthew 2, 13-15. Now when they had gone, they being the Magi, 
Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night and left for Egypt. He remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Now, why go to Egypt? Well, first of all, of course, it fulfills prophecy. The prophecy noted on verse 15 is from Hosea 11.1. 1. Also, due to the diaspora that we talked about in my first episode, there was a large Jewish community in Egypt. Where exactly? There are a lot of legends, but truly hard to say since the Bible doesn't give us any clues. They could have settled in Alexandria, which had one of the largest Jewish populations in Egypt. Joseph and Mary would have been able to become part of this community very easily, as Joseph was a carpenter, and his skills were in demand. Later, Joseph was told in a dream to return as, quote, those who sought the child's life are dead, end quote. It's interesting that this is done in the plural. It may not have been just Herod, but an entire system was searching to kill Jesus. We can see when Joseph is told by God to go to Galilee, since Archelaus, Herod's son, became king in his place. As a result, he settles in Nazareth, and this is where Jesus will eventually begin his ministry. So like Moses, who came out of Egypt and led his people from there, Jesus would come out of Egypt and lead his people out of spiritual captivity. Well, that wraps up our Christmas episodes. I hope you enjoyed the information and were able to learn something new. If so, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe and give me a five-star rating and review. To give you an idea of the schedule for the future, I'm going to take a break until after the new year. Then I'm planning on putting out two episodes a month. That being said, I would really like to hear from you. What topics would you like me to research and talk about? You can email me at biblebackdrop at gmail.com and let me know. Just to give you an idea for future episodes, I'll be talking about marriage and biblical times, finding out more about the Pharisees and Sadducees and the politics around Jesus' time, Rome's involvement in Israel, and an exploration in the different cities of the Pauline epistles. I'm also going to dig into the Old Testament to talk about the tabernacle, the temple, and the different Jewish feasts. I'm really looking forward to sharing all this with you and hope you'll keep listening. Have a wonderful Christmas season, and I'll see you in the new year. 